أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Assessing Normality of Data IBM SPSS AMOS Series So what is normality? This is a normal distribution. As you can see that there are very few cases on the lower side, very few cases on the higher side. Whereas the cases or the responses are concentrated around the center. So a probability distribution that is symmetric around the mean showing that data near the mean here are more frequent in occurrence than the data far from the mean. So majority of your data would be closer to the mean value rather than on the extreme sides. We normally assess normality using skewness and kurtosis, although there are other tests as well. But in AMOS series, we are going to focus on skewness and kurtosis. Skewness and kurtosis. Skewness. This is basically the tilt in the distribution. It could be left or right. Now look at this. This is positively or right skewness. If this peak was on the other side, we would have said left or negative skewness. So what is kurtosis? Kurtosis is the peakness of the distribution. This heaviness or lightness in the tail usually means that your data looks flatter or less flat compared to the normal distribution. Now look at this. Look at the height. Now if this was flat here, somewhere here, this would still be the peakness or low peakness or less flat. Now if this is the case in your data, we are going to look into how to solve this issue. However, first we are going to measure whether there is an issue of normality in our data or not. Normality assessment. Now after the fit indexes or indices have been achieved, the researcher needs to examine the normality assessment for the data at hand before proceeding to model the structural relationships. Using the final measurement model from the output, check the box test for normality and outliers in order to assess the distribution for every variable in the data. Now how do you do this in AMOS? What we do is we get this table. But in order to do this in AMOS, let's go to AMOS. And what we do is we go to analysis properties. And from the output, we are going to select test for normality and outliers. We are going to close it. We are going to run our analysis. We are going to go to the output and here we will have assessment of normality and observation farthest from central. We are going to look into this as well. So assessment of normality, here is your table. I've copied the same table here for explanation purposes. Here. So you will see this table. Now how do we interpret this table? Let's look at that. So normality assessment. The normality assessment is made by assessing the measure of skewness for every item. The absolute value of skewness 1.0 or lower indicates that the data is normally distributed. However, in SEM or structural equation modeling using maximum likelihood estimator MLE like AMOS, this is fairly robust to skewness greater than 1 in absolute value. Now, if your sample is large and the critical region for skewness does not exceed 8.0, this means that your data is normal and you can go ahead with your analysis. Now, meaning the researcher could proceed into further analysis as CM since the estimator used is MLE. Normally, the sample size greater than 200 is considered large enough in MLE even though the data's distribution is slightly non-normal. Thus, for sample size greater than 200, the researcher could proceed for further analysis with the absolute skewness up to plus minus 2. This is the range for skewness, although some experts have also suggested the value of 3. Now, look at this. Look at this table here. If we look at this table here, the skewness is well within or less than 1. The critical ratio is obviously less than 8. So we do not have any skewness issues here. Moving on, let's look at the other one. Now another method for normality assessment is looking at the kurtosis statistic. However, SCM using maximum likelihood estimator MLE is also robust to kurtosis violation of multivariate normality as long as your sample size is large. 
Now for kurtosis, the range is minus 10 to plus 10. And this is still considered normally distributed according to Collier 2020. Now based on our results, let's look at our results here. Now these are our results. Look at this here, well within the range. And the critical ratio is just over 3, not even over 3.5. So we can say yes, our data is normally distributed. Moving on, there is one important thing that we see in the output. And that is called Mahalanobis distance. Now, if the distribution is found to depart from normality, the researcher could assess the Mahalanobis distance to identify the potential outliers in the data set. So, where is this Mahalanobis distance? If you come here, here is your distance score. Now, look at this here. These are quite high values. Look at these. And if we go about till here, we see that both P1 and P2 values are significant, even this one. Now look at the distance. This is the distance from the centroid or the mean values. So 54 and 38. So I do not think if removing these observations will actually influence your results, but you can give it a go. So let's first understand what is this and then we are going to get back to it. So AMOS computes the distance for every observation in the data set from the centroid. The centroid is the center of all data distribution, normally your mean score. It tabulates the distance of potential outliers from the centroid together with the probability of an observation suspected to be an outlier in the first column and the probability that an observation of similar extremity would occur given a multivariate normal population, that is your second column. So the outliers occur when the distance of certain observation is too far compared to the majority of other observations in the data set. Now, if we go back here and look at this here, so your data or your distance is not that different from other observations in the data set. You will have, or maybe in your data set, you might have it like 100, 70, and that the rest of them may be in their 30s. So that's quite a distance. So in that case, deleting the observations may have an influence. In this case, well, the distance is not that high between, let's say, let's say this one here and the values above. But still, it's quite a distance. So you can go on and delete it. The deletion of few extreme outliers in the model might improve the multivariate normality. Once the outlier is identified, the researcher could go back to the data set and get them deleted that is your observation number so once you get these d square values and once you decide to delete it just go back to spss look at the observation number and delete it the new measurement model is re-specified using the clean data set now you need to rerun your model so how do you assess how do you use it this statistics represent the square distance from the centroid of the data set the bigger the distance the farther is the item from the mean distribution so AMOS actually presents you with two values, P1 and P2. A good rule of thumb is that if you have P1 and P2 values that are less than 0 0.001, these cases are denoted as outliers. So you may remove them. So in this case, what will we remove? We'll remove these values here. These are less than 0 0.001. Although, so we may remove this one as well here, these ones. All of them that have got P1 value less than 0.001 or both of them having P value less than 0.001. So in this case, we can remove these first five items. The rest of them, you see, there is very little change in the D square value. Moving on. So what if your data is not normally distributed and you are having normality issues? How do you solve this problem? Now, bootstrapping is the resampling process of existing data set using the method of sampling with replacement. The statistical procedure would compute the mean and standard deviation for every sample of size n to create a new sampling distribution. So what you are doing is, based on your data, you are creating a new sampling distribution. The researcher could instruct AMOS to collect 1000 random samples from the data set and redo the analysis. 
Now since the sample size is large, the new sampling distribution would be closer to normal distribution. AMOS would analyze the bootstrapping data and produce confidence interval as well as significance for every parameter involved in the analysis. The researcher could compare the actual results with bootstrapped results to confirm the analysis. Now if the results differ, the bootstrapped result will be acceptable. We are going to look into detail on how to use bootstrapping in AMOS as well. I hope this video would have helped you understand the concept of normality and how to assess normality in your data. Again, if you want to know further, refer to the book by Joel E. Collier. Thank you very much.